Okay, let's get into taking apart the rest of the right ascension axis. So I've mentioned that this piece here is basically a giant nut. It's threaded down there and it has the two holes and you use your spanner wrench. But there's another trick that a lot of people are unaware of that causes trouble. You'd say to yourself, how is this nut stop from backing out? There's set screws in it at a few points that actually thread in there. And you say, well, how do I get to the set screws? We come over here, when we took this ring off right at the beginning, there was a screw here, uh, a thumb screw that screwed in. When you take that out, it leaves a hole, and that hole is lined up perfectly for you to be able to get in there and get to these set screws. So what you do is you look down in between there, and you rotate it around until you see a set screw hole line up, Use your small wrench, and it goes through like that, and use that to loosen your set screw. Now, in this case, this one has three holes, not just one. So you got to make sure you check all of them. And the reason I say you need to check them is because two of the holes did not have anything in them, as far as I can tell. The third one, this one, did have a little set screw in it. Let's come around here and double check. So this is number two. And so you should be able to feel, this is a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench. You should be able to feel if there's a screw in there or not, uh, if you catch it. Oh, maybe there is one here. Oh, there was one there. Okay, so that's number two. Let's check on number three, which is right here. Some mount designs have one set screw, some have two, some have three. So make sure you check them all. So that one had one in there too. So these, the thing is these set screws are very deep inside because they run the whole length of this. So you might turn it quite a few turns and not going to sense anything is going on until it finally comes out. So make sure you check all of them. Now this nut should be pretty much loose. There you go. So the one problem is those set screws, when they put them in from the factory, they're pretty tight. And they actually chew up the threads inside just a tiny bit. So this can be a little bit hard to take apart at first. If you don't feel it turning at all, then you missed a set screw and you need to check. Because if you try to force it, uh, you will chew up things really badly in there. But if you know that you got all the set screws loose, and it's just a little tight, go ahead and pressure through it because that means that the threads inside are a little chewed up and this ring will actually clean them up a bit as we take it out. So eventually you hit a point where it's just loose and you can unthread it. There you go, unthread, unthread, unthread. And almost there. So there you go. So this disc is basically a giant nut. It's threaded on the inside there. And here are the set screws I pointed out. There's one, two, and three. And you can see how deep in they go. They go the whole length of that. So, And on this one, as often the case with these mounts with this grease, there's a little plastic polyurethane spacer here. Or washer. This is another one of the bearing surfaces. All over inside these mounts, uh, CG2, CG3, CG4, is even the CG5s, um, are these little plastic bearing surfaces. And they get stuck in places because of the grease. And sometimes you're unaware they're there, and you can lose them or just not keep track of them. So you are always got to keep an eye out for those things. That was stuck to this one. We'll just wipe that down a bit. Okay, so there's a, the nut and the bearing. So now we have the right assistant shaft and this housing. So theoretically, I think at this point, there you go, you can just slide them apart. Okay, 
So now we have the right ascension axle, the declination housing. Here's the right ascension housing and then the base. So here, let's take a look at what we have in order. So give it a wipe down. So here were the threads that this threaded onto. Okay, so that's the threads there. There's the shaft. Here is the right ascension worm wheel. And you'll see that it has one of those red fiber bushings on there. So this other bearing came down here like that. Actually, I guess it was just right there. So the worm wheel comes off. And like I said, it has the fiber washer on that side. And there's nothing on this side that's stuck to it at least. We'll see what's further in. And this, of course, I'm just going to put a towel down because this is so, this one is so messy. We'll just put it right there for now and deal with it later. So on inside the shaft, right here is another one of those fiber bearings. Okay. And then that seems to be the rest of the shaft. Now this piece is driven into this housing. And I don't know if they actually separate or not. I don't think they do. It's probably not worth the effort of trying. I think that it's driven in there. Uh and kind of consider permanent. So, uh, but let's see what can be removed. Uh, so we have this, which is the declination setting circle. And because we can see a little set screw hole in there, let's see if maybe there's a set screw that we can remove. Now oh, there is, okay. Probably just loosen that, that might be enough. So that comes off. So that's a declination setting circle. Okay. There's a fiber bearing inside there. Let's see if we can just peel that off somehow. Uh, let's see. Tweezers maybe. There we go. There we go. So that comes out. And as I put these side by side, you'll see they're different sizes. Okay. So that's the trick to keeping track of some of these things is all these fiber bearings are different sizes for different purposes, okay? So as long as you go back and watch the earlier videos or just make some notes on what goes where, we'll be able to tell what goes in what position. So right ascension axle, declination housing, all complete. That can go off to the side now. Right ascension housing, there's no more bearings or bushings or anything in there, okay? So that's all that's left for that. Now the trick is to separate the right ascension housing from the base. And the problem with that is there's no obvious connection here. Uh, there is an axle there because this uh, can angle for your latitude. But we have to take these covers off. So first things first is, again, one of these protective plastic sheets. See if we can uh, get our hands on that and remove that. There you go. There, that comes off. Okay. That was just for decorative purposes. So this one is our label side. Here's the latitude scale. Somewhere in here is something we need to get to. And the trick is how do we get to it? So in this case, these are glued in place. So you take your razor hobby knife, your razor, whatever, and you try to just get in between there a bit. And you see if you can get these covers off. If you can get one off, then the other one gets easier to deal with. And this one seems to be set in. So I think that this black one is the one to go for. So we're going to pause the video while I work on this. Okay, we're back and you can see I got very far. <laughs> these are well glued in place. For the time being we don't need to separate these two housings. We can get in there and clean this one amply as it is. So if you don't want to separate this, there's no real reason to at this point unless you want complete disassembly. 
if you do, you need to find a way to get this cover off. And maybe over the next day or two, I will work on that and see if I can get it off without breaking it. But for the time being, it seems to be on there pretty tightly. When I worked on these that are a few years old, these covers all come off pretty well. I think the glue inside dries and hardens. But this one is factory new, and so it still seems to be pretty well glued in place. So we're going to leave it on for now, and we're just going to work forward from here. So in the next week, I will continue on with these videos, and we will start the process of cleaning everything and getting all of this grease off of here. Clean everything, measure it, work on aligning it and putting it back together, and we'll see if we can end up with a CG4 mount that behaves significantly better than what we had before. Thank you for viewing. Be sure to come back as soon as I get new videos, maybe in a week, maybe longer. We'll see what it takes, and we'll go from there.